Dr. Levis mentioned kind of a contactless branch. And even myself, and I know this has kind of been a, a buzzword lately in the industry of, of how can we find a way to get a contactless branch. I'm not necessarily sure if that's the right word or not. And in some cases, right, we want to, um, we do need contact, but it's maybe it's managed contact. Maybe it's the right type of contact. Um, and again, that could be contact via remote, via digital channels, via um, safe channels, um, or in, in some cases, like I said, as long as we're just keeping that six feet of distance and you have some good ventilation and a mask on, there should be no reason why we can't have um, one-on-one -on -one contact uh, inside the branch uh, as long as we're following those rules like Dr. Lovis mentioned. Um, so I want to spend some time today kind of talking through our vision and what some of the technologies that are available that are out there today that maybe you're aware of, uh, maybe some are, are newer to the industry. And if you've been on some of our webinars prior, you've, you've heard us talk about just leveraging existing technology that's been around for years. But because of the, the virus and because of our shifting of our new normal lives that we have, um, happen to tweak those technologies just slightly to adapt to even serve us better than they have in the past. And one of those is our remote view platform. Uh, if you want to jump to that next slide for me, Kyle, that'd be great. Um, remote view is within CSG has something that we've had for years now, and it's been huge in, in, in supporting and keeping your branches operational. Um, but one of those pieces is, again, managing that contact. Not always can technicians or even your own IT staff be on site to manage or update or maintain your equipment. And remote view has been key for that for a lot of our, our customers. And the fact that when branches did close down or when we were not able to go out to be physically on site or inside your branch to, to update things, uh, being able to manage that remotely through our network operations center has proved to be very valuable for a lot of our customers. But furthermore, remote view has been used and has been continued to be tweaked a little bit to really be an integration uh, portal for, for a lot of our different solutions that we've deployed. Several of you are familiar with our Pico solution, our Soteria solution that we just unveiled in May, and Conveyance that we, we unveiled last year. All that is powered and run through our remote view platform that allows us to connect these different devices together. And so when thinking through a contactless branch, or again, if that's not the right word, a managed branch or something different um, as far as how do we get the right technology inside your, your facilities or outside in that matter, um, remote view can prove to be a very valuable solution or really any type of remote management software um, to kind of serves on both fronts, right? You have your consumer experience in mind and how can we deliver a fantastic experience to your, to your members or to your customers, but also how can we ensure that your employees have a great experience, right? That when we deploy technology, we're not adding platform creep and adding more responsibilities and, and cumbersome duties on the back end that, that limit the effectiveness of some of these technologies that are available. Remote view has proven to be valuable on both ends, uh, not only powering a lot of these technologies that can impact the consumer experience and make that better, but also helping your staff to allow them to focus on their day-to-day -day activities while we can manage and, and right source a lot of those technologies for you and, and manage those for you. So keeping in mind that I think remote technologies in general um, will be will play a big theme, and I would say we'll start to play and continue to play a bigger um aspect of our day-to-day -day lives, especially within the banking environment. And the good news is, again, as within everything within CSG, we're trying to do as best we can to get everything to funnel up into our command center so that becomes a better experience for you. The more you have it, the more you, the more solutions you have within CSG, but also the more you use it, um, the better the experience that becomes for you as you kind of join our, our Cook ecosystem. If you go to the next slide, Kyle, I'll kind of want to build upon this branch a little bit as we go through here and see um, you know, what this branch looks like today. And as you add some of these technologies, what it could, what it could look like tomorrow or, or, or the coming months. Um, our next piece is within our Pico solution. So Pico and, and surveillance in general has been something that we've always seen as more of a security tool, right? And for those of you that have been following Cook Security Group for a while, or for those of you that are brand new, Pico is, is a video surveillance system that we unveiled a year and a half ago, um, but really is kind of disrupting the game where beforehand, surveillance was used strictly for security purposes, right? Can I have footage in my branch to detect, you know, when something happens, can I then re retroactively pull up video and see who it was? Um, we're changing the game a little bit with how we view Pico, and really when it comes to a contactless branch, of using this now for more video surveillance, not video security. Um, yes, Pico can take care of all your security needs, but Pico can also be used for retail as uh, aspects. It can be used for marketing reasons. It could be used for real-time analytics to give you more insight and data into what's actually going on inside your branch. A good example might be, hey, I want to have, pull a heat map 
that shows me where people are congregating when they come into my branch. Are they going to the right or to the left? Can I then put good marketing screens there to, to get more exposure, more recognition from that perspective? Can I get real-time data on how many people are actually coming into my branch and which way are they going through line crossing? Um, or can I even tie that into some facial detection or object detection to know who's coming into my branch and, you know, are they happy or are they mad, right? Um, what type of age demographics coming in? Um, even down to the point where we can even read license plates. Um, if you want to jump to the next slide for me, Kyle, I kind of want to show a little bit about this where Pico is truly an open and secure platform where really you can combine several different aspects to really provide a true video aspect into your branch. Um, again, we've talked about video banking for, for years, and I've grown up in that space where we've necessarily thought about it with ITMs initially with doing transactions. And then we've then popped on the scene with Pop.io and some of these other video collaboration tools that have come out for the consumer experience. Video also from the surveillance side has, is also growing up in this space to where now it's being used again for more than just it was initially for, for, for security purposes. So, Pico is really good at tying in other analytics, whether that's spatial detection, heat mapping, license plate recognition, object detection like we showed here. Um, and I would invite anyone today after our webinar, if you didn't join us in May when we unveiled uh, our new Soteria solution that I'll talk about here in a second, it's well worth 30 minutes of your time to be uh, hopefully well entertained to see kind of what you see here with, with the chain of events with, with Joe Exotic and, and some tractors taking out some ATMs that, were, that we had a lot of fun with. So, but it does show, really how video can be used in a totally different manner than what we've traditionally used it for within our branches to provide um, provide more of that, that, that feedback. Even tying into other enterprise third-party systems like Linnell or DMP or your, um, you know, any other systems that you might have out there, and even cloud-based applications like IFTTT or Zapier, um, Google Home, you name it, right? Um, I always give our CTO Levi Daly a little bit of a hard time, but it's funny where, He's gotten to a point where he has his own Pico system at his house, tied up to his um, his his um, his home, where he can use it to turn on his sprinkler system if he needs to, or change the lighting inside the home. Even so much that we do it at our at our at our office in um, in Portland, and also throughout um, some of our offices that we have within CSG, just because we can. Uh, sometimes the use cases aren't necessarily super relevant to banking, but just because we can, we do it anyways. And that's the awesomeness about Pico, and really where the where videos come today. Um, to really do it, whatever you want to do, uh, bring the bring the ideas and the art of the possible to us, and we're really confident with how we can use that to really provide a richer experience. And again, keeping in mind those distancing rules that we have in place now with these new branches, Pico can be um, excellent in, in allowing you to do that. Um, let's go to the next slide, Kyle, and I really want to tie, tie into this Soterios product that I was just mentioning earlier. Um, as we kind of evolve this branch here forward, we talk about Soteria. And Soteria is really a key piece in what we've determined in connecting these different technologies together. For a long time, um, we've always deployed technology, and it's been some, sometimes these siloed technologies. And you can all raise your hand virtually if you'd like to, if you know what I mean by that, where every time we kind of come up with a new project for a long time, and we're getting better and better at this to where um, these technologies just wouldn't talk to each other, right? You'd have these standalone siloed solutions and you go back and look and they all be the point to point connections if they had a connection at all um, and sometimes they wouldn't have any connection you'd have these stand up servers that um, wouldn't really serve you to their fullest potential so Terry is designed and, and homegrown within CSG to really allow that and we're starting at the grassroots with connecting your surveillance to access control and alarm and incident management for true end to end um, protection there, but also looking beyond that in the future of what other technologies and enterprise systems can be managed through this middleware platform that we've developed. But it really can truly automate your branches to, to a level that we've never even conceptualized beforehand. If you go to the next slide for me, Kyle, I kind of want to show what we mean by that. Um, initially, again, we, we go where you'd have one single platform where it wasn't, wouldn't be connected, but Soteria is really that that lock or that hinge point to where it can really happen. Again, if you jump on our website and you see this this video that we did in May, where we unveiled our Soteria solution, you can really get a true um, flavor of what it actually what actually happened. Um, and it's real time, automated solutions that can allow for some real real time savings for you. What I mean by that is, let's say you did have an event in your branch where um, either someone came in symptomatic into your branches or you know, maybe you had a robbery or something like that happened where it set off an alarm. 
And let's say, you know, your, your teller pushes a stress alarm or something like that, or maybe you have it tied into a fever camera where it automatically detected that someone had a fever. Um, it could then automatically through Soteria lock down certain rooms so that you don't, you can reduce your exposure, right? Uh, or automatically trigger an alarm that then notifies the authorities if you have a robbery event going on, for example. But while we're doing that, also you can pull up real time video on your mobile device, on your, on your PC or wherever that shows the actual video and the, the correlation with that alarm or those door contacts. So you can see, you don't have to pull up and start searching and trying to find where is this person at. It automatically does it for you. But the best of all, and what I think really surprised a lot of our, our viewers in May when we had launched this was real time while we were kind of going through and demoing this, everyone in attendance got an invite to our command center where it showed an automatic case or incident that was put together real time um, throughout throughout the, the the event, which is just pretty cool. And it already did all the legwork that typically we have to do on the back end with your employees, where it automatically pulled the video and automatically pulled the case logs and, and almost started that case off for you so that you can now easily share it with other third party um, companies, whether it's an insurance agency, if you had a tractor take out your ATM, which I know we've all kind of been there lately, um, or whether it was, you know, you want to share it with the FBI or the local police agency, um, all that's automatically done for you. So again, automating within the branch, again, not necessarily be a consumer experience that we're looking for, um, or really impact or really be uh, transparent to them when they come in with the branch. However, on the back end, keeping your employees experience top of mind, so Terry can truly uh, provide some, some efficiencies there for you and for your customers. But again, I would say, this can also be, like I mentioned, help protect your, your members or your customers when they do come in the branch by, by locking down and securing and ensuring that proper protocols are really in place um, when we're there. Go ahead to the next slide, Kyle. Um, from here, I really want to start talking through um, some other technologies that really might help more on the consumer experience side. So uh, oftentimes we're talking through how can we manage the experience within your customers, right? And for a long time, and, and we'll have Tracy and both Wendy also talk about this as well from their experience in deploying some of these technologies. But um, you know, the ATM, the transaction side has been a head scratcher for a lot of us, right? Is how can we now, with this new branch, with the contactless branch, truly deliver all the transactions that are available to our customers? Um, and sometimes you kind of think outside the box and saying, it's not just within my branch building walls, but how can I deliver it remotely? And so we've partnered up with both NCR and Heosung for years now in delivering those different technologies, um, but also in deploying our own conveyance solution too to really help automate that again on the employee side. So if you go to the next slide for Mikhail, I'll kind of illustrate what I mean by this. Um, and we've, and again, this is, this is not by any means one size fits all. And that's partially why within CSG, we like to provide those options to you so that you can make the right decision for what's right for you and your, and your customers or for your members. Uh, just because, you know, the credit union down the street or the bank next door, has deployed a Heosung or an NCR solution, and they may not necessarily mean that's the right solution for what you're trying to accomplish with your strategic goals. So we're gonna provide that, that honest, unbiased uh, opinion in trying to help you make that decision together. But in honesty, there's, there's several uh, things to look at here. When you talk about remote full service, we, we know what this means with, with regards to ITMs. You're not really sacrificing a whole lot from the transactional or from the consumer experience as, composed, as opposed to the teller line like you're used to today. We can truly provide face-to-face -face interactions that community banking is known for, but right into your core system that allows um, full range of transaction sets and things. Um, we've seen this really successful remotely outside of the branch even, to where it's in the drive through or in new locations, or even in some cases if you're thinking about leaving a, a small town that you just can't facilitate or, or sustain a full-fledged branch anymore, having an ITM there with still a face-to-face -face interaction has proved to be very valuable and also very profitable from a a referral and a sales process too, to not just um, all be self-service. This will allow you to really um, have those transactions um, in a face-to-face -face manner. Um, but in, in the branch, sometimes it might be a little bit of a different experience, and that's really where it comes to in-person assistance or tablet of service or even seller cash recycling for that matter, for even some commercial accounts. Um, either solution can truly provide some unique ways and some safe ways to provide uh, those transaction needs for your customers. On the back end, though, we have conveyance, which was really designed to help with check processing and check automation. Um, we find this is the big cause for platform creep before conveyance came unveiled, where you'd have multiple solutions um, running check deposits. So if you go to the next slide for me, Kyle, I'll, I'll illustrate this in a, in, a, in a graphic. Today, you have transactions and checks being processed on several different channels, right? 
whether that's your ATM or your ITMs. And again, that could even be if you have multiple brands of ATMs, if you have Diebold and NCRs and Heelsung, sometimes you have three different platforms. Or if you have just ATMs, you want to deploy ITMs, you blink and next thing you know, you got a new solution to deploy to support those different technologies. Remote uh, conveyance powered by remote view can handle all of that with one single platform. And then moving forward into mobile, RDC, branch, or teller capture, other the modes to where you're depositing checks today, our goal um, as we look at check imaging in the future will really be powered through through our conveyance cloud application. And again, always funneling up into our command center as that really enhances your ecosystem before it gets sent off to the Fed for processing. So it's really kind of trying to disrupt what we feel like is a huge problem today with uh, with just check imaging in general and how we can truly automate and again, keep contact us, right? Not having to walk out and touch checks that were deposited by, by your members or your customers, being able to do that all remotely uh, when possible is gonna be key as the doctor mentioned earlier. To go to the next slide for me, Kyle, um, there's one piece that I feel like has really, um, has really lost its flavor and what, something that we've always struggled with too beforehand is even with ITMs and with enhanced self-service or teller cash recyclers, there still seems to be like five or 10% of these transactions that we just can't do in an automated way. Um, and that's interesting in the fact that, you know, you have these things such as, you know, debit card issuance or money orders or rolled coin or bags delivery um, are also on the consumer side of how some of these, these, these commercial accounts can deposit or bring in these non-traditional transactions into the branch where sometimes these ATMs or recyclers have a struggle doing. Um, we've just partnered with Luxor One uh, for smart lockers, which we're really excited about because I feel like this brings a, a non-form factor to being able to handle that, that, those odd transactions that those traditional businesses, um, can't handle. And also partnering with Entrust Data Card too from the auto card, um, and debit card issuance, even to the fact that we just have deployed our own, um, UV cabinet too. So if you jump to the next slide for me, Kyle, I'll kind of show a little bit of example of what this looks like. Um, but smart lockers, you've probably all used this before, whether you've delivered you know, a package to, to Amazon, or you've even used it to pick up something. This is something that's bi-directional that we're really excited about, that if you put this inside your branch, it could have multiple reasons to benefit you, right? One is you can now deliver products safely um, and at a distance and without contact to your customers, right? So whether they're online and they're ordering a new debit card, for example, you can have our auto issuance machine print that card uh, real time within the branch and have an employee put it in the safe um, in one of these smart lockers to then at their leisure, their, your, your customer or member can walk by and pick this up um, using a secure contactless way to, to do that. Or on the flip side, your, your, your customers or members can come and deliver packages to you. So if you have, um, you know, small businesses that are dropping off their, their bag of coin and they may have used to do it a night drop, now they can do it now securely, but also electronically and they actually get feedback in real time you know, um, integration with you to say, hey, yes, I delivered that package and here's the time step and just put some more more rigor around it. Um, it also can be used as a lease option too, which we found where you can use this and, and maybe even rent out some of these spaces to some of your commercial accounts or business business units that can now drive traffic to your branch, but also drive additional revenue where we know that's going to be becoming more difficult with the interest loans that the rates that they're at today and, and the reduced volume of people coming into the branch. This can definitely be an option to bring in more volume to your branches, which we're excited about. Um, we've also deployed our UVC cabinets, which several of you already have in place and are using today. But again, a way to sanitize the products that we are delivering to your to your uh, customers or members, right? Um, we all know that cash is dirty. We know that you know some of the tech, some of the different pieces that are used and, and transmitted throughout your journey inside the branch. Stuffing this all inside your your cab at the end of the day or throughout the day, sanitizing it with UVC lighting that we know kills um, kills viruses and bacteria can prove to be very, very beneficial, not only in protecting your frontline staff, but also a great marketing tool to make sure your 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 customers and members know that the stuff that they're getting has been sanitized um, through UVC light and able to, to help them um, to stay safe and, and want to come into the branch and interact with you. We'll go ahead to this last slide here for me, Kyle, and we'll kick it over to Tracy and Wendy to kind of share their experiences. But um, the other piece too, to really think through is the digital side, right? Um, so whether it's it's video from a collaboration, like we mentioned earlier with Pop.io, where you really want to enhance and, and gain more um, more products for household. I feel like with social distancing, it makes that more difficult. And I kind of chuckle a little bit because I've been a huge proponent of this. And I, I don't know if I need to apologize or not, but I feel like we're still in the right spot where we've been working for years to 
reduce the size of our branches down to be micro or express type branches. And now, like the doctor's saying, we now have to keep six feet of distance. And now all of a sudden you look and say, man, is my branch profitable because I can no longer fit 20 or 30 people in my branch. I can only fit five or six and keep them safe. Are these, are these micro and express branches a bad idea? Yes and no, right? It can be if we don't have the right technology. But with Pop.io or Digital Insight or Typhoon or some of these other really good leading edge digital providers that are out there today, we can still make that branch experience fantastic. Um, and even with Pico, too, from that matter of, of reducing dual control, um, you're really able to, to change the experience within that branch and also reduce the number of people that have to be in there while driving profitability up, which we're, we're super excited for. So if you go to the, the last slide here for me, Kyle, um, although CSG doesn't necessarily completely get into these technologies, we are really tied to hip because of just how that interaction it plays and rolls out into other technologies, as we, as we just uh, explained earlier. But if you are interested in learning more about these technologies and really finding the right experience for the right channel, it's very important. And I want to have Tracy and, and both Wendy talk about that experience specifically because I feel like both of their institutions have done a fantastic job in doing just that because it's not always a one size fits all, right? It's not a, let me deploy ITMs everywhere and, and hope that it works. It's looking at every channel and deploying the right solution for the right channel and sometimes it's going to be a few different technologies, but it might be a consistent experience. We feel like we've gotten to that point now where, where throughout the right partnerships, you can ensure that you have that and deliver that.